If you have your Bible, go with me to the book of Luke. I'll go to the book of Luke today. I, I got a lot of ground to cover, and uh, I want to obey the Lord. How many know when you uh, feel like you, you got something to say, you don't want to piddle around? Amen. If you have your Bible, go to the book of Luke. I'll be in Luke chapter 22. I'll just read one verse. And uh, I'm going to dig around this passage uh, for the next few moments. Luke chapter 22, one verse, verse 42. And when you get to Luke chapter 22 and you find verse 42, would you shout a big amen? amen. If you said amen... Or even if you didn't, would you stand real quick? I'll read this and then pray and then unpack this text. Saying, Father, if Thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but Thine be done. Father, I'm humbled by Your presence. I thank You for the good worship. Thank you for what you did last night. Thank you for communion. Thank you for sweet fellowship that we have had this day. God, as I've opened your divine book, I pray that you would give me insight to your word. Help me today to rightly divide the word of truth. Save a sinner. Bring a backslider home. Bring real revival to the well. And God, when the glory falls, we'll point everybody to you. We'll give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. you may be seated. I, I take this text and immediately thoughts like this come to my mind. Jesus is in the battle of his life. Amen. And, and he begins to say some key phrases. Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Here's what I thought about that I'll give you just in passing. I believe that Luke 22 verse 42 is Jesus' life verse. <laughs> Amen. This is his life verse. Verse. It is the hub. It is the apex of his life. Everything in his life revolves around this verse. Would somebody say amen? amen? Not my will, but thine be done. Now, if you like to write down what the man of God preaches so that he can't come back next year and preach the same thing, then I want you to write down living the exchanged life. I didn't even get an amen. Brother Jason, living the exchanged life. Now, you say, man of God, are you going to dig around that? Yeah, here's what I'm going to tell you. Jesus is God. He and, and he looks at his father in this verse and, and he says, Father, not my will, but thine be done. Would anybody agree he is bowing down his authority to God? I am bowing down. I am going down. And, and, and here's what I deal with in the kingdom with people. Oh, brother Derek, it'll not, it won't be that big a deal to give up my will for God's will and exchange in my life for His life. That will be easy peasy. You're crazy. The hardest thing that you'll do in your life is giving up your will. For His will. If you agree, say amen. And, and God began to deal with me. And God gave me some things that, that He gave me some principles that Jesus does that I want to apply to our lives this morning. Number one, if you take notes, I, I, I want you to notice with me and, and I, I'm going to give it to you. Look at verse 42. 
One more time, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Number one, I I want you to notice this is simple, Brother Branson, but so profound. Jesus is resting in the Father. What do you mean? He is resting in the Father. Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup. Now, would you agree? You say, what is the cup? What is this cup deal? Would you agree with me, Pastor Joplin, that Jesus is reluctant to drink this cup? He don't want this cup. And I begin to scratch my head and say, God, why is your boy pulling away? Why is he reluctant? Why does he not want to drink it? And I heard this in my spirit. Derek, there is a cosmic war taking place between divinity and humanity. Amen. And someone says, well, what does that have to do with me? Well, there is a battle in all of us between God and man or flesh and spirit. Would somebody amen that? And there is a war. Let me show you how intense the battle. I'm in verse 40. The Bible says, I'm still in Luke 22, and when he was at the place, he said unto them, pray that ye enter not into temptation. Wow, this is interesting. A battle of temptation. How big is the battle? Here's how big, Brother Jason, the battle is. Normally, his pores that would pour out sweat are pouring out blood. The intensity of this battle is like the world has never seen. And you say, Derek, is that it? No, I'm not done. And it got even clearer for me. He said, go to verse 43. Still in Luke 22. There appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. An angel came down to God's boy and began to strengthen him. What is this cup? Now I cannot prove this And you cannot disprove it. But I believe why Jesus, pastor, didn't want to drink the cup right here is because he believes that this cup is the devil is going to take him out right here. Wow. What do you mean? He thinks... That if I drink this cup... Now, Father, you know that I came here to willingly walk up a hill. You know I came here to go to a cross before the foundation of the world. Christ was slain. And it feels like, Daddy, that if I drink this cup right now, He's going to take me out right here in this garden. But Father, not my will. Y'all ain't hearing me. Not my will, but thine be done. Hey, Father, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do right here in the darkest hour of my life. I'm going to rest in you. I don't know how you're staying calm. I'm about to shout amen myself. He's resting in His Father. Hey, let me ask you a question. If, does anybody in this sanctuary this morning feel tired? Anybody feel like there's a battle taking place? I've never seen... I, I, I battle it more now than I've ever battled it. And God said to me, He said, Derek, listen to me. In these latter years, yeah, you're 45, but son, in your latter years, you better learn to rest in me. You better learn to reside and rest in me. If you agree with that principle, would you shout amen? Amen. And it goes on. Look with me. And boy, there's so much i got to give you. And I'm not going to preach all day on point one, but but go to to John chapter 4. I'm going to dig something out for you. I'm in John chapter 4 verse 31. And 
But he said to them, I have meat to eat that you know not of. Boy, we could pause and preach right there. He, here's what they're telling him. The disciples are saying, you're tired. You need to eat. Watch this. Therefore, said the disciples, one to the, have any man brought him aught to eat? Jesus saith unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Did you hear what Jesus said? It is my will. It is, it, is, it is my meat to do the will of Him that sent me. Now here's what I'm going to say about that. To live the exchange life, you got to rest in God. Amen. And the only way Jesus is saying, I'm going to rest in my Father, Him resting in His Father, His Father is controlling it all, and He's putting His faith and confidence in God the Father. I said, but God, this is amazing. He wants to do the will of God. And would you agree at the well? The greatest thing we can do is do the will of God. He's resting in His Father. There's so much more. Go with me to to St. John chapter 5. I'm going to show you principle number 2. St. John chapter 5, verse 19. Now, and I know I'm at the well. You just got to forgive me. I preach in Baptist. I preach in Pentecostal. I preach in ever. I mean, Methodist. I mean, you name it, I'm there. And can I tell you, they all don't have a clue half the time. Just grin. You'll make me feel better. Look at, look at St. John 9, 5, verse 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing. Did you hear that? The Son can do nothing of Himself. But what he sees the Father do, for what things soever he does, these also does the Son likewise. Now, now, now leave that on the screen because I'm going I'm to milk that for a minute. Jesus is not only resting in the Father. He's depending on the Father. I, I can do nothing. Do you realize this isn't Branson? This isn't Derek. This is Jesus. And brother Jason, why is that important? He said, I can do nothing. Now, everybody look up here. Do you realize I get around people in church? They can do anything. They outshine Jesus. Don't you sit up here and act like you don't know what I'm talking about. I can do it all. Just let, just depend on me. No wonder we're having issues in church. If God's boy says he can do nothing, why on planet earth would you think you could do anything? <laughs> well, if I have to amen this, it's going to take me twice as long Jesus is dependent upon His Father. I hear this statement my whole life. I've heard it my whole life. And you've heard it, you've heard it as well. God helps them that help themselves. Hold up. Why on planet earth would God help them if they could help themselves? Here's the way I read it. God helps them who can't help themselves. <laughs> now, you say, Brother Derek, are you going to put the jelly on the bottom shelf so we can all get some? Yeah, I think I will. Do you realize my parenting skills and God's parenting skills are two different skills? Let me break that down for you. This will be real simple. I mean, well, no, let me back up. It's going to be profound, so you might as well write it down. I'm a parent, and I'm raising my kids to leave. I'm raising my kids 
to get out on their own. Make their own money. I don't want to take care of them. All my life. So I'm pouring into them. Baby, you got to get a job. You got to work. Don't y'all sit up here and act like I don't know what I'm talking about. Don't depend on Derek Daniel Stinnett. I'm limited. <laughs> I'm preaching real good. Hey, hey, listen, I'm raising, I'm raising aid and get out on your own. Work. Hey, put, go to church. Be faithful. But if I get this, do you realize I'm serving a God that wants me to come in? And He'll take care of me from now on. <laughs> that is a good deal. Jason, do you realize your heavenly Father got you into the kingdom not so He could get you out. He brought you in so that He can take care of you from here to now on. Is anybody glad God's parenting skills isn't like ours? Hallelujah! He brought me in to keep me and provide for me. And be faithful to me. If you agree with that, shout a big amen. Yeah. Now, I'm still in St. John. I'm in chapter 5. I'm in verse number 30. Number 1, he's resting in the Father. Number 2, he's depending on the Father. Number 3, I'm in verse 30. I can of my own self do nothing. There it is. As I hear, I judge, and, and my judgment is just because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. Jot this down. He's not only resting in the Father. He's not only depending on the Father. He is a promoter of the Father. <laughs> oh, man of God, I never saw that. Well, He is promoting His Father. Here's what He is saying, Brother Jason. Here's what He is saying, Brother AJ. He is saying, it's, it, it's, I, I don't want to do what I came to do. I come to promote my Father. Not my agenda. I came to promote my Father. Now, now you're going, you say, man, preacher, is there any deeper truth? Can you dig it out loud? Go to verse 31. It, this one blew my mind. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. Can I put that on the bottom so we can get it? Here's what he's saying. Brother Chris, if I push myself, I'm a liar. That's what he's saying. If I promote myself, my record's not true. I came to promote my father. Wouldn't ministry get better if we quit trying to promote ourselves? <laughs> promote the Father. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't come to make you think I'm great because I'm not. I want to be like my Master. I want to be like Jesus. I want to rest in Jesus. I, want, I mean, I want to rest in my Father. I want to be depending on my Father. And I want to be a promoter of my Father. If you like that and want that, would you say amen? amen. Now, I've went a long way. You've listened great. He's basically saying, I don't want the attention. I don't want anyone clapping for me. I give the glory and the honor to my Father. Now, I said, boy, God, this is all profound. He said, I'm not done teaching. He said, Derek, go to St. John 7. I'm about to get to where I want to go. I'm in St. John chapter 7. I'm in verse 16. Jesus answered them and said, my doctrine. Everybody say doctrine. Do you realize the church is scared of that word? Don't be scared of that word. No need in being scared. Let me prove what doctrine is. He said, my doctrine is not mine, but, but His that sent me. <laughs> Pastor, the little word doctrine in the Greek means study of. Branson, 
Preacher, here's what that means. Jesus said, I'm a student of my Father. Oh, wow. I am studying my Father. If you're going to live the exchange life, you've got to rest. You gotta depend. You gotta promote. And then you gotta be a student of the Father. Now, break that down. Here's the best I got. There is a picture, and this is so profound. All that I have said leads to the apex of this message. There is an analogy in the Word of God. I feel Roman candles going off in my spirit. There is an analogy in the Word of God. Between milk and meat. If you've heard of that analogy, say amen. amen. Milk, meat. I asked somebody the other day, I said, what do you think is the difference between milk and meat? Here's what they gave me. One's a liquid, one's a solid. I said, I wish you'd have thought about it a little longer than that. <laughs> it's a little deeper than that. Come on, somebody. I said, well, okay, God, if you're going to give me the assignment to break down milk and meat, I said, how do you want me to word it? <laughs> he said this to me. I, I, I know some, this is going to be a little, this is going, this is going to gag some of you, but I'm going to give it to you now. If all you ever do is stay on milk, you'll never live the exchange life. Wow. Let me say that one more time because that side over there didn't hear me. If all you do is stay on the milk, you'll never live the exchange life. Let me prove it. Well, well what, what's the difference in milk and meat? I'm glad you asked. Milk, this is so profound, Jason, I can tell you need to write this down. Milk comes from the cow. Meat is the cow. Oh, God, I, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe that don't bless your blesser. Maybe that don't help you. But oh, it helps me. Because can I tell you, when you are a milk person, all you know about God is what somebody else told you. When you are a milk person, all you know is what you heard the Sunday school teacher tell you. Oh God, I'm preaching. If all you are is a milk person, all you know is what the bald-headed preacher from Springdale told you. You're on the milk. There's got to be a day that I get past the milk and I get my steak knife out. And my fork and I get up in that cow and carve me out some meat. I can hear all the vegetarians are getting nervous. I can't help it that you ain't got any sense. If I eat today, I will get some meat. Because I like it. Somebody hey man that. Oh, hold up. You say, Derek, Derek, are you getting... No, 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 no. I'm almost there. The CDC, that's Center of Disease Control in Atlanta, Georgia. Sis Andrea had done a, done a study on a mother's milk. Now, can we be grown-ups? How many know mother's milk we ought not blush? That's feeding a baby. Can we be adults in here? Okay. They were doing a study about a mother, a nursing mother. And I'm going to tell you, Brother Branson, when I read the study, 
I am convinced they didn't want me to get what I got out of their study. I'm all right with that. The reason they didn't want me to get what I got out of it because they're heathen. They're pagan. I love God. Here's what they said in the, in the study. A nursing mother, when she gives birth to a baby, and the baby is premature, they call the baby a preemie. The first time the baby touches its mother and begins to nurse from its mother, I, I know the baby can't talk. Somebody amen that. But somehow the baby tells the mama, Mama, I'm a preemie. And the mama begins to produce proteins. And matter of fact, the next time the little baby nurses, the mother sends a mother load of protein. To help the baby develop. To make the baby fat. I like this story. Because I'm fatter now than I've ever been. Don't y'all judge me. I'm losing weight as soon as I get home, boy. Thin is in. Fat's where it's at. So, yeah, someone asked me the other day, man, I got, why are you getting so big? I said, because if I get sick, I got a fighting chance. <laughs> I look at some of y'all, I'm praying for y'all. <laughs> y'all too skinny. Aiden worries to death about eating too much. And get, I said, son, you better enjoy life because it's going to be over quick. I'm praying for cheese dip when we get out of this house. <laughs> Leave me alone. Hey, what are you doing? Here's the study. Then it goes on in the study. I promise I'm going to get back to preaching. Then the study said this. If a mama begins to nurse its baby, not only if it's a preemie, the mother would give a mother load of protein. Secondly, if, if a baby comes in contact with a sickness, an infection, the baby will signal somehow to its mama, Mom, I've come in contact with a sickness. And Mama, I've come in contact with something and I need something from you mama and the next time that baby puts its lips to its mama and begins to nurse the mama will God somehow will put antibodies in the mother's milk and the very thing the baby's fighting mama gives it a fighting chance Wow! I'm not done. Someone said, well, Brother Derek, go a little deeper. There was a lady in Virginia. You'll love this story. There was a lady in Virginia. She, she burned her arm so severely you could see inside her arm. The mother next door, she's a more seasoned mother. She had ten kids. If you got ten kids... You're seasoned. Somebody amen that. You know how to do it. She had ten kids. The mother across the street that burned her arm severely. She had five kids. The mother of ten knocks on the door and says, Ma'am, sweetheart, hey, I heard that you burnt your arm. And that mother showed her her burnt arm. The mother of ten said this, Are you still nursing? that last child of yours. She said, I am. The mother of ten, Brother Joplin said, to the mother of five, do you have any 
milk. She said, I got some in the freezer. She said, you need to throw out your milk. That little mother of five that had the severe burn goes inside, gets her own milk that she'd been feeding her baby. She thaws it out and, and she lathers that burn. And three days, everybody look up here. Three days later, you couldn't even tell she had been burned. Now I can already see minds going in warp. Where is he going with this? How is this applying to me? Milk? I don't know nothing about milk. Well, I just spent five minutes trying to help you know something about milk. Get on my nerves. You try to give people stuff and they don't get it. Wake up! We're here! <laughs> I, I have way too much fun preaching. So, so if God can take, here's where the preacher go get good. If God can take a mother's milk and help the baby go from a preemie and develop it with the protein. If God can take a mother's milk of a lady and, and, and the baby's fighting an infection and the baby, the mother gives the baby antibodies to fight off the infection and then a mother's milk can go on an open wound and begin to heal the wound in such a way that three days later you can't even tell the wound, you, you can't even tell there was a wound. Pastor, what can the meat of God's Word do? I'm going to get down here and look you in the eye. I'm dealing with people that have hurts in their lives that they can't shake. They can't overcome. They come to me every week of their life and say, Derek, I can't overcome this. This wound in my heart. What if you begin to dissect the Word of God and eat it on a daily basis and begin to take it into the heart and to let it go beyond the intellect. Y'all not hear me. And let it settle inside the heart and deep down in the bone mara. Would you agree with me? If God can take a mother's milk and help a baby grow and help a baby, baby fight off infection and help heal the wounds of the heart, would you agree with me? The Word of God can heal you of the disappointment of yesterday. The Word of God can help you develop and take a licking and keep on ticking. The Word of God can change your life forever. Amen. It is not just for seasoned saints. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, it is for everybody in this room. God is wanting you to live the exchange life, resting, depending, promoting, and studying the Father is what we got to do to live the exchange life. I, I close. Derek, are you, are you, you really mean that? No, but it sounded good and you bought in. St. John 8, verse 28 and 29. I'll do my best to shut her down right here. St. John 8, 28 and 29. Then said Jesus unto them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, watch this, then shall you know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself. Boy, He's driving that home. But as my Father have taught me, I speak these things. Here's the line. Brother Jason, that convicts me. Brother Troy, that convicts me. AJ, this convicts me. And He that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone. For I do always. Huh. Y'all didn't hear that. For I do sometimes. No. I do three out of four. I do one out of six. No. 
Jesus said, I do always. You read that? He that sent me is with me. I do always those things that please Him. Now, now here's all I'm going to tell you. Here's all I'm going to tell you. The last thing I see in living the exchange life is Jesus is pleasing the Father. Let me go slow. Derek, I'm trying my best to please people. Well, you'll spend your life frustrated, aggravated, nervous twitching, You can't please people. I, hey, as, as sweet as I am, everybody don't like me. <laughs> 210 pounds and all. I decreased it by two or three pounds so y'all be impressed. <laughs> If I suck it in, boys, I still look good. Somebody amen that. If I suck it in, I can button this button. I mean, it don't look like it, but if I really... I can breathe. Y'all laugh, and the reason I'm making fun of myself, some of y'all need that. It just helps y'all. <laughs> Quit trying, Aiden, if I can teach you anything. You can never please people. But son, if you'll please God, that's enough for me. Now, now give me a second. I, I, I told you. Are we, Pastor, are we doing okay in time? We are? Then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you... Three more things. <laughs> he, he turned, he got real nervous. Now, now I'm not going to preach them. I, 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 it's 10.04, so I'm going to do this. I wrote this down, and this convicted me, Brother Branson. Jesus is pleasing His Father. He's resting, He's depending, He's promoting, He's studying, He's pleasing His Father. It will not be an easy task. But that's what we got to do to live the exchange life. I wrote down three things. I'll just read them off. If you're going to live the exchange life, number one, you must give up total control of your life. Let me say that one more time so it'll sink in. You must give up total control of your life. Now, everybody, look up here. This, this is a quick story. Do you realize they got a car today that they tell me, Jason? Drives by itself. Here's what I hear, Branson. Here's what I hear. Why well, ain't letting that car drive me? Yeah, and you won't let God in control either. <laughs> Amen, Derek. That's true. Number two. Not only got to give up the controls of your life. Number two. This one don't. This one may left a mark. You got to give up your choices. In your life. God, I give you control and I give you my choices. This one is going to bother some dads and moms. Number three, you got to give up all the conclusions of your life. Everybody look up here. I'm, 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 I'm turning my Bible. I'm shutting my Bible. Any of y'all got kids? If you got kids, raise your hand. Oh God, this is going to be good. You got to give that up how your kids are going to turn out. Because it's up to God. Or you pour into them, Jason. You love on them. You instill in them. You raise them. But do you remember what I told you? My parenting skills and yours is different. I'm raising mine to leave. <laughs> He's raising his to stay. Give up the conclusions. Would you stand all over the room? Derek, I, I, I'll tell you, man of God, I, 
I want to, I want to live the exchange life. I, I want to rest. I, I want to depend. I, I want to promote. I want to study. I, I want to please my Father. <laughs> 